Hi, my name is Paul Offit. I'm talking to you today from the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. It's Thursday, December 1st, 2022. One question that people have is, when can we stop masking? When can we stop social distancing? The truth is, I think that's already largely happened. Um, one way to define a pandemic is that it changes the way that you live, work, or play. Um, and that you move from pandemic to endemic um, when it doesn't change the way you live, work, or play. I think that's really already largely happened. But these viruses still do circulate, not just the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID, but also influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, parainfluenza virus, and all the other winter respiratory viruses. I've had friends who've said to me um, that they have young children, say first and second graders, who when they have upper respiratory sym symptoms like congestion, cough, runny nose, fever, that they test them to see whether they have COVID. And when they don't, then they send them to school as if that's the only disease that can be transmitted and cause harm. The fact of the matter is all of the viruses that I just mentioned can cause children to be hospitalized and to go to the intensive care unit and worse to die. So um, when should we mask? And I think I would argue that maybe we should just stop testing and that, that any time any child has a respiratory virus or, or an adult has respiratory virus, that they should, while they're symptomatic, especially while they have fever, they should stay home. That when they still have symptoms and they have to go to work or go out into the world, at least wear a mask. And know that any of the viruses, whether it's SARS-CoV-2 or flu or, or paraflu or RSV, any of those viruses can cause harm. I mean, in two years before, the SARS-CoV-2 virus came into the United States. Influenza caused 800,000 uh, hospitalizations and about 60,000 deaths. Yet in 2020, when we did mask and social distance and close businesses and close schools and restricted travel, there was virtually no influenza. So you certainly can affect the transmission of influenza or respiratory syncytial virus if you mask and social distance. But I think that um, we don't have to do that all the time for everybody. I think we should really focus on those people who have respiratory viruses and in many ways treat them all the same. I think in, in all likelihood, what's going to happen with COVID is it will start to settle down and have the same kind of statistics as influenza, RSV. Remember, RSV kills 6,000 to 10,000 elderly adults every year. So all of these viruses are dangerous, and maybe we'll get to the point where we treat them all the same, where for those people who are symptomatic uh, with a respiratory virus, that they will, they will not suffer the sin, if you will, of presenteeism, where they go to work or go to school um, knowing that they uh, are contagious with a respiratory virus. Thank you.